Hey everyone, today I'm going to start working on a design for a small scale firewood kiln. I want to create an off-grid, no fuel, mobile kiln system. I've got these cages that I can fill with wood and easily move around with some forks on my tractor, so I'm going to design the system around using these. They hold about two cubic yards or one and a half cubic meters, and I don't really need them to dry very fast. I'm not doing high volumes of wood, but if I could have it dry in about a month or two, and if I had three systems and I could stagger them and rotate, then every two weeks I'd have about two cubic yards of freshly dried wood. So I'm gonna design a small kiln that can handle just one cage at a time, and then I can make a few of them and just use them in rotation. So now I'll just jump in the workshop and start working on the design. First off, I want the kilns to be self-powered and not need any maintenance. So I don't wanna to have to load up fuel or have any fuel costs at all. So I think I'm gonna to try to make them solar powered. Each kiln will be fully self-contained and they'll have two solar panels each to run the entire thing. That way I can move them around the property pretty easily depending on where the sun is or if I have a pile of wood I need to process, I can just take the kilns to the pile of wood. So basically I'm thinking of an insulated cube with a door on the front and it's all set up on a pallet. So I can get forks under the pallet and just move the thing around. I can just open the front door, drive one of the cages full of wood right into the cube, shut the door and that's it, it's done. I can check the moisture content periodically, but I don't need to do anything else until the load is done drying. So next to the solar system, I wanna keep it as simple as possible so it's both cheap and reliable because there aren't many parts to it. So I'm gonna to try to just have the two solar panels connected directly to a heating element and that's it. That way I can skip charge controllers and batteries and all of the expensive stuff in a solar system. So that brings me to the type of heating element I'm gonna use and I'm gonna to try to use this which is a PTC. PTC stands for positive temperature coefficient. Basically how these work is that as the heating elements begin to get hot, their resistance increases. So they have a sort of max temperature built into them. As it approaches the high end of the temperature, the resistance just increases so much that it can't take any more power. So on a really sunny day, it'll use as much power as it can, and then it just kind of caps it before it gets too hot. But on a cloudier day, it might not hit its max temperature, but it'll be using all the power it can get from the solar panels. So I can oversize the array a bit so that on a cloudy day, this thing is still putting out about as much heat as it can, but on a sunny day it just heats up to its max temperature and just self-regulates and stays at that temperature. So I don't need any other parts, I just need two solar panels, a fuse or breaker, and this. To hook this up, I'm just going to connect this to a 12 volt power supply just to make sure everything's running fine. I'm going to throw an amp meter on here so that I can see how much power it's drawing. And just a word of warning, when these things are powered, they are live, they are hot, and they are not insulated. So they cannot be touched, and they cannot be touching anything conductive, because they could either give a shock or cause a short. But basically, you gotta be really careful around these things. And then I'm also gonna run the thermal camera on this so that I can verify that it is actually getting hot. Okay, so here we go, and I'll plug it in. Okay, right off the bat, it's drawing about a quarter of an amp, which is about 60 watts. Okay, it definitely started to heat up and everything's looking good. This in theory can hit about a thousand watts. I've got a nice sunny day, so I'm gonna take this out and see how hot it can get. So the next thing I need to do is make up some solar cables. I'll be using standard MC4 connectors for the solar panels. And please remember, if you enjoy the video, likes and subscribes really help the channel grow. And if you wanna help us directly to keep the content coming, you can do that over on Patreon. Okay, let's go plug these in. Now I'll connect both panels in parallel using these Y connectors. Next I've got the heater and the breaker just mounted to this board. And I'll go ahead and set this up and I'll make sure the breaker is disconnected so that even after I've wired everything up, there should be no current flowing and I'll have to actively close the breaker to make the whole system work. Now I'll just connect the negative lead with a wire nut for this test. Okay, everything should be ready to go. I just need to close the breaker off, but I'm gonna set the thermal cam up first. And I'll also stick the amp meter onto the positive lead. Okay, and here we go. So right off the bat, it is drawing 14 amps and that is getting hot. It's up to 90 degrees Celsius. We're at 18 amps. That is about 170 degrees Celsius. 
and it's down to drawing five amps. So as the temperature is increasing, getting close to its max temperature of 200 C, it's drawing less current. So far the system's working perfectly, exactly as it's supposed to. Now I need to build a kiln and get the heating element hooked up to it. But now the question is, is that heater enough to warm the kiln? I'll start by framing up just a basic platform. And I'll add a hole in the center where I can mount the heating element. I'll put some risers on the bottom so that I can get forks under it. And then I'll frame the whole thing like a basic small shed. The inside will get clad with plywood. And then the cavities will all get six inches of insulation. Then I'll cover the whole thing in a breathable membrane. And it gets sided and roofed with basic box profile sheet metal. With the main body of the kiln done, I'm gonna tip it on its back now so I can install the heating element on the bottom. First I'll attach the heater. Next I'll attach a solar powered fan behind the heater. This way I can play with forced air to see if I can improve the heating in the kiln. And now I'll wire these in. I'll have the wires run underneath and then up through the inside of the box so that I can access the fuse if that ever trips. And then out through the side so I can hook them up to the solar panels. Now it's ready to move outside and set it up. <laughs> now I'll split a load of green oak to fill up the cage and I'll be using a log splitter that I made and I'll link that video in the description below. Now I'll put the cage into the kiln. And then I'll put the door on the front. And you can see here there's a vent hole at the top. The door is built in the same manner as the kiln and the siding is placed so that the ridges line up and it holds itself in place. Now I'll hook up the solar panels. Okay, so the panels are hooked up and the heater is running. I've also plugged in the solar fan, so it's running too. And now I'm just gonna spend a few weeks experimenting with different fan speeds and how hot I can actually get it inside. I'm gonna be taking measurements of the moisture in the wood at regular intervals so I can get really detailed results of how well this is working. After the testing phase, when I set this up in a permanent location, I'll actually switch the kiln around so that the door is facing on the north side so the panels can be permanently mounted against the back wall so that I'll always have easy access to the front door. But anyway, it's all up and running now and I'm taking temperature measurements of the inside and the ambient temperature outside. The system does need quite a bit of sun to run at its peak and it's not a particularly sunny day, but as you can see for the first temperature readings, it's about 63 degrees outside and the kiln's up to about 82 degrees on the inside or that's 17 degrees Celsius on the outside and 27 degrees in the kiln. Overall, I'm really pleased with how it's working so far. Now, the UK isn't particularly known for its vast amounts of sun, so we'll see how it holds up as we get further into autumn and winter. But so far, on a reasonably sunny day, I'm getting about 82 degrees on the inside of the kiln, which is about 20 degrees warmer than it is outside, and that should be drying the wood pretty well. And if we get some really sunny days, I expect it to get quite a bit warmer than that. And if you live somewhere that was really sunny, I think this thing would work really well. So anyway, I'll let this thing run for a month or so or until the wood is nice and dried out. I'll take temperature measurements along the way and I'll take moisture measurement readings on the wood and see how long it takes to actually get this wood nice and dry and ready to burn. So I think that'll do it for this video. Let me know down below in the comments if you want me to make a set of plans for this build. If you have any suggestions on how to make this better, I'd love to see it down below. And I'll be back soon with a bunch more videos I've got lined up. So thanks for watching and take care.